Let's be honest, writing is hard. And it's even harder if you've just gotten into it. There's a million things you need to learn and a billion things that can go wrong when you're writing. But today I want to talk about five specific mistakes that new writers make. And I also want to give you some solutions to help you address them. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer, I've been doing it for 10 years. I've won contests like Pitch Wars and Rev Pit. And welcome to my writing channel. Today I wanna to talk about five fatal mistakes that new writers make. And these ones can really hurt your writing career if you don't address them as soon as possible. The first fatal mistake that writers make, they don't study plot structure. And this is so important because plot structure is the groundwork upon which all your other story components are laid. Once you have your structure in place, then you can worry about things like character development and world building and theme and symbolism, but you need to have the structure there first. You need to know what's happening at the beginning, middle, and end of your story. One of the best guides to plot structure is Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody. It's a super accessible book for beginners. Basically what Jessica does, she breaks down plot structure into 15 simple, easy to understand points, and she explains how they factor into a story and at what percentage points in a story they should occur. It's something I'd highly recommend and I will link it in the description below. The number two fatal mistake that new writers make, they don't study personality types. When I talk about personality types, I'm talking about the Myers-Briggs test. If you're not familiar with Myers-Briggs psychology, uh, that's the, the four letters where it defines your personality type based on whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, whether you're intuitive or a sensor, whether you're a thinker or a feeler, and whether you're a scheduler or somebody who just perceives opportunities. If you've ever seen things like INTJ, ENTP, uh, ISFJ, things like that, those are different personality types, and there are 16 in total. Writers need to understand personality types because if they don't, they're going to end up writing a lot of characters who are exactly like them. And while maybe you can make that work for a short story or two, eventually it's going to tire out your audience. If you understand personality types, not only can you write more characters and better characters, you can also better understand the interactions between your characters, and you can make them more authentic. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Myers-Briggs psychology, just do a Google search, Take the test, learn what you can about it, see if it, it interests you. And if it does interest you, consider picking up a book like Please Understand Me Too by David Kiersey. The number three mistake that new writers make, they don't write every day. Now that might sound overwhelming to you at first. You might say to yourself, well, writing every day, that's a lot of work. And of course it is. I mean, that's the whole idea. Now here's the thing. When I say you need to write every day, I'm not saying that you have to write for hours every day. I'm not saying that you have to write 10 pages every day. I'm not saying that you have to write 3,000 words every day. All I'm saying is that you should find a way to get writing into your schedule every single day. If you're busy and you only have five minutes to write, take those five minutes at the end of the day, middle of the day, whenever, take those five minutes, just jot down some ideas. Just dot, jot down a stretch of dialogue. See if anything comes out of it. The important thing is that you do get into the habit of writing every single day. Because if you write every day, then it becomes a habit. And if it becomes a habit, then it becomes hard to break. And if it becomes hard to break, then you're writing often. You're putting out more ideas, more stories. And the more you do that, the better you become as a writer. You're just gonna gain experience over time. The number four mistake writers make, they don't have critique partners. Critique partners are other writers who will read your work in exchange for you reading their work. The idea is you want to give each other feedback, and this is important because if you don't have feedback, you're never going to be able to grow and develop as a writer. You need a critique partner because you need someone who can point out your strengths and weaknesses and tell you all the little things you do wrong and all the big things you need to improve upon. Now, if you just started out writing, chances are you don't have any writer friends. That's okay. If you're in high school or college, check with your school. See if there's a free writing group you can attend. See if you have classes that are available to you that you can take. If you don't have any local writing groups or anything like that, check online. See if you can find something on Reddit, maybe one of the writing subreddits. Or check a website called Critters, which I will link in the description below. Now the fifth and final fatal mistake that new writers make, they don't submit their work. This is one that can kill you. And the reason why is because if you're not submitting your work, you are sending a bad message to yourself. You are saying that you don't believe in yourself, that you are afraid of rejection, and that you cannot overcome that rejection. And that's not the mentality you want as a writer. Part of believing in yourself is submitting your work even when you know that you will most likely get rejected. And that's okay because every single writer out there gets rejected. It's part of the game. Look at Steve 
Stephen King. He used to get rejection letters when he was younger, and he would hammer a nail into his wall, and then he would slip the rejection slips over that nail, and he filled up that nail over the course of his, his early career. And that's how he developed as a writer. He learned to overcome that rejection, he learned to challenge himself to do better, and that's what you need to do. You need to challenge yourself to get better all the time. So don't look at rejection letters as a death sentence. That's not what they are. Basically, every time you submit your work, you're taking out a lottery ticket. You're saying, hey, you know what? There's a good chance I'm not going to win this, but there's also a chance that something goes right. If you don't give yourself a chance, no one else ever will. If you need a great website for submitting short stories, check out the Submission Grinder. I'm going to link it in the description below. It's basically a database that has all these different uh, active short story publications where you can submit to, uh, has all kinds of stats on them, uh, you know, submission guidelines, things like that. It's something you should definitely take a look at and you should use often because you want to submit your work. Question of the day, what mistakes have you learned from as a writer? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out my other videos. Hit that like and subscribe button for me and remember to keep on writing.